Hello everybody, Jim Powers with the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Glad to have you with us as we get ready to start the 2015 season and a big game nationally televised. It's the first college game of the year. We'll kick off this coming Saturday with North Dakota State defending four-time national champions taking on a very, very talented FCS school and joining us from Fargo is Jeff Kolpak. He covers the Bison day in and deer out. And uh, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. How's everything going? <laughs> Good. This is a first for me, Jim. So uh, hopefully I can provide something for you. No, no doubt. I, and and I, mean, I mean, obviously it's been such an exciting time up in Fargo with North Dakota State, four-year defending national champions. And it just really seems like they they reload every year coming into the preseason. How's the preseason been for the Bison? Have you seen so far? Well, I haven't really seen a lot because uh, in this day and age of social media, we're not allowed to see much practice, you know, like a lot of beat writers across the country. But, you know, you're talking about reloading. Yeah, you could say that in the last three years, but this year is just a little different in that the defense has some – youth for the first time, you know, but guys like Kyle Emanuel and Christian Dudzik, uh, you know, Colton Hegel, they played the equivalent of NFL seasons, you know, that many games, they played over 60 games that, or almost 60 games. That's a lot of experience to lose. So you're going to have some question marks and certainly going into Montana, Montana's got that Bob Stitt offense. Now, what is that Bob Stitt offense? It's that Colorado Mines fly sweep stuff that, you know, we've heard about. I'm just really interested to see how this team will react. I mean, that, that that's a tough environment, number one. Yep. And number two, it's going to be a tough uh, X and O uh, thing for this defense. You know, and you're exactly right, but let's talk. Let's start off on the offensive side of the ball. I think one of the stabilizing forces coming back offensively is going to be Carson Wentz at the quarterback position. Absolutely, and, and that's a pretty good spot to start with. Uh, Carson Wentz is 6'6", 235. He's gotten some pro uh, attention, I guess, with Mel mm -hmm. Kuyper rating him the third best prospect as a senior for the draft. That's a long way away. And, I, you know, Carson's he's a smart cookie. You know, he's a 4.0. Uh, you know, he, he's a leader. He was a captain as a junior. Um, really came on, I thought, toward the end of the year and, and was really good when it counted. And we saw that in the national title game. Offense, there's not many questions. I mean, there really isn't. This, this, this whole thing right now early in the season for the Bison, I think, is all on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, when you talk about the defensive side of the ball, you hit it on the head a moment ago. There's a lot of youngsters that are going to see some first-time extended playing time here as you go on the road to open up, you know, in probably one of the most hostile environments in the FCS. Right. And I think you can talk about environments in the FCS. I think it boils down to maybe five that are really hard. The Fargo Dome, yep. UNI Dome. I think Youngstown, when it gets cranking, is one of them. And certainly Washington Grizzly and Missoula uh, is right up there. You know, it's going to be tough, I think, in the fact that uh, this first time NDSU has gone on the road this early, I think. They're usually opening up at home or on the road at an FBS. This is different. This is an FCS inter-regional matchup that uh, could have implications down the line. I mean, this is not going against, uh, you know, some team that finished, you know, fifth in, in, in some other league in the FCS. This is an established power, as we all know. It'll be interesting to see how both teams react, really. And it, I think you're starting to see some of the FCS schools Instead of playing an FBS school, because we see what the Big Ten's doing, we see what some of the other power conferences are doing, you're starting to see some of these matchups in the FCS within the top powers. And I think this is the first one this early in the year that we've seen. But I think, you know, you're going to see a lot of this moving down the pipe with the FBS schools not wanting to play the top tier FCS schools. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't get me going on this Delaney <laughs> FBS thing because. I would say, I would argue that playing a top flight FCS team is probably better for your program and, and your RPI or your Sagarin rating than playing a bottom Mac. It, it really is. But, you know, that's water under the bridge right. and whatever. But uh, NDSU is uh, I, ideally, it wanted to play a regional FBS team like Minnesota. Well, they went 2 1 against Minnesota. The Gophers won't schedule them anymore. Iowa State. Colorado State, Kansas State, you know, those Midwest kind of schools that are in the FBS. And no, they're not answering the call anymore. So it forced NDSU's hand, I think. It did get a game with Oregon for 2020. 
So it had to go beyond the footprint. It had to find a top 10 team or a top 20 program that's willing to play it. I mean, Oregon's not scared of North Dakota State, right? Right. Let's face it. They're not scared of playing anybody in the FCS. So that was a doable, schedulable game. But in the meantime, I think NDSU had to go to do the next best thing, and that is to schedule a Montana and Eastern Washington and those types of schools, and which is really cool. I mean, yeah. I mean, how fun of a game is it going to be Saturday for everybody to watch? Well, and plus two, they got it set up to where they can open, you know, the college football season, uh, you know, in the FCS FBS schedule on ESPN in front of a national audience to really showcase the Bison. Was you know the town of Missoula and Montana, and also just two great powers in the FCS. I think Eastern and Sam Houston saw that last year when it opened up the, this game as yep. the only game on on, on the schedule. Um, yeah, you got Brent Musburger at the play by play. I mean, uh, you know, one of the legendary figures who lives an hour from Missoula thought, you know, hey, I'd like to do this game. They're bringing the whole crew. I mean, they're not bringing a, a you know a, a dumbed down crew. They're bringing the whole shebang going to be a top flight presentation i think that espn's going to do uh, so you know any exposure by an fcs program on espn of this magnitude is good exposure it's huge talk a little bit about the conference from the fargo perspective i think once again we're in for just another knockdown drag out fight when it comes to who's going to be the league champion yeah, well, unfortunately, NDSU and Illinois State aren't playing each other again this year. That's a matchup that I think everybody would like to see. I, I, I see some teams losing quarterbacks, so a lot of it's going to depend on, you know, these new guys at, at, at quarterback. And Northern Iowa is, you know, replaced Carnes. Um, you know, South Dakota State, can they replace Sumner? I think those are big question marks. Uh, you have some new coaches in the league uh, that are going to be interesting. But uh, I still think, uh, you know, looking at, at it from a, you know, from a perspective of who's coming back. When you have the top two teams that were in the national title game back, you know, with a lot of weapons on offense in both teams, I think you got to look at this league being the top league heading into it. Outstanding, Jeff. Well, thanks so much for the time, and we're looking forward to hearing all of your great thoughts throughout the season from Fargo. Have fun on the uh, road trip this weekend to kick the season off. Thanks, Jim. Always a pleasure. Good to talk to you, and we'll see you all year, huh? It's going to be fun. 